Hello and welcome to yet another lecture on control system. Myself, Prothito Rai, Assistant Professor of Dr. Shudhir Chandra Shodhi Guru Engineering College, Electrical Engineering Department. So today we will discuss about the speed control of a DC motor. That is the armature control and also the field control. And along with the AC servo motor conception. So let us start. So this is the field control and the armature control of a DC servo motor. So first of all, we have to know what is the servo motor. The DC motor generally used in case of the servo mechanism is known as servo motors. So what is the servo system? The servo system or the servo mechanism that is a type of positional velocity or the acceleration is system is generally known as servo system and the DC motor which is generally used in the servo mechanism is called the servo motors. So there are in order to obtain the speed control of a DC motor or the DC servo motor we have seen that the there are two types of speed control. One is called the armature control and another is called the field control. So what are the features of a DC servo system? First of all, we will draw the flux versus field current characteristics of a DC servo system. The flux versus field current characteristics of a DC servo system is like that. So here what are the features that the rotor inertia must be very low so that the torque to inertia ratio is very very high and another is the time constant is very low. This is the two features one is the rotor inertia must be very low so that torque to inertia ratio is very high and the time constant is very low in case of the DC servo motors. So the DC servo motors generally operates in the region called the linear region that is OA. So DC servo motor is operating in the linear region of the graph say that is the OA where the pi is directly proportional to the IF. So this is the operating area of an DC servo motor. So there are two types of con control. One is called the armature control where the flux, flux phi remain constant means a constant voltage source is applied on the field and another is known as the field control. So let us start with the armature control. So first one is the armature control where the flux remain constant means a constant one is called the armature control and another is known as the field control of an DC servo motor. So again the servo motor is known as the motor which is generally used in case of the servo system any positional acceleration of the velocity system is known as servo system and the features of the servo motors are the time constant is very low and the ratio of inertia and the rotor inertia must be very low that is the torque to ratio inertia means the in torque to inertia ratio is very high and this is servo motor is generally operating in a linear zone where the pi is proportional to the if and it is seen the linear zone is no, uh, given in the graph OA is operating area of an DC servo motor. So let us start with the field control of a DC servo motor. This is the general equation for the field. This is the DC servo motor where it is supplied with the help of a voltage EA and RA in, and the EA are the armature resistance and the reactance and this is the armature and the back EMF that is generated in the motor is known as EV which is P5 NZ by 60A and uh, load it is connected to the shaft of the DC servo motor having a moment of inertia equal to J 
and the dashboard or the damper head. The damper is the damper coefficient is b, and the angular displacement is theta, or the angular speed is omega equal to d phi by d theta. And here it is seen that the field which is supplied with the help of a constant voltage in order to make phi f equal to constant. So this is the general application of a DC servo motor. So when it is connected to a supply voltage say EA, it will allow an armature current IT to flow through the armature. This is the armature of a DC servo motor. Now, so here the magnetic field which is generated in the DC servo motor which is remain constant. And as a result, a torque that is, we all know a torque that is generated in a DC subtim uh, motor when this phenomenon is known to us when the permanent magnet N and C and coil is connected in between the constant flux that is flux lines that is from N to S and rotating armature is there, it will in generate in the air gap, it will produce. So if an N as the magnetic fields which is responsible for producing the magnetic flux, and an armature coil is produced in the sparks, which is in trans develop a torque within the air gap. And this is torque is directly proportional to the phi into IA that is known to us. So let us first see the arrangement. Let us first see the arrangement of the DC motor field, which is called the armature control. Arrangement of the armature control of the DC motor. First, we will concentrate on the armature control arrangement of the DC motor. So, where in case of armature control of the DC motor, this is the armature resistance, this is the inductance, and this is called the brush. These two are the brushes, two brushes. This is the motor or resistor. Generally, it is the armature and it is connected back to the This is the armature control conception. So, the armature control that is given that this is the armature, these are the two brushes, this is the, the armature. voltage that is applied to it is say so EE this is supply voltage to the armature of the motor E sub is A and a back EMF that is generated is known as PB that is P5 which is opposed the supply EMF that is known as back EMF from the conception of DC motor. This is the resistance RA that is called the armature resistance. There is the inductance called LA that is into us and a fellow with armature current to flow IA to the circuit. So, and a shaft that is connected with the with a mechanical load. A shaft that is connected with a mechanical load which in trans there is a damper or the dashboard of the system that is called the B and the mechanical load having a moment of inertia that is J. This is the shaft, this is a mechanical shaft that is known to us where the load is connected and the angular displacement is generally known as theta. So the omega, the angular velocity will be d phi by d theta that is known to us uh, ddt of theta and here the field this is the load this is mechanical load this is called the mechanical load And 
here the field is connected to a constant supply in order to make the flux that is the field coil and here it is the field current is if and it is supplied with a voltage called d that is a constant one to make that to make if equal to constant a constant supply voltage is there to make if a constant one and this is generally known as the field coil and this is the armature winding this is the field coil and this is the and this enter is the armature this is called armature so this is the armature control method the schematic diagram is shown in the figure so when a rotor this is a schematic diagram of an armature control method so when a conductor is start rotating in a steady of the south magnetic field it will produce a torque so uh, means so when the armature is start rotating in the air gap of the north south pole it will produce a map uh, produce an uh, torque in the air gap this is the flux by the field and this is the magnetic field by the armature conductor and interaction with those two field magnetic field if a torque is produced we all know that torque is proportional to the y into ia in case of the dc series motor but the if phi is proportional to the if so let us concentrate on the torque equation of DC series motor. So torque is directly proportional to phi into IA. So here phi is directly proportional to the IF and which is remain constant in place of the which is remain constant uh, in case of the Armature control. So torque is directly proportional to the I. So it is nothing but a y equal to mx. A straight line that is if I draw the torque versus armature current, you will find that it is nothing but the straight line passing through the origin. But after a certain value on the code became saturated. So it is drop down like that. So this is the torque versus armature current characteristics. So let us take that this one this is a linear portion where y equal to mx is there and this is the motor the proportionality constant that we have obtained omit the proportionality constant we just get torque equal to p into i a so this is called the this generally follow the y equal to mx pattern a straight line passing to the origin and after reaching a certain value it is y equal to mx pattern so after reaching a certain value as the code we can saturate it so it is putting in nature so up to that it is all the linear portion and this is for the linear portion this is the saturation zone and this is for the magnetizing curve so as a result and that k is known as torque constant it is newton meter per ampere so as a result that voltage that is generated according to the third is law of electromagnetic induction which are actually proportional to the d by by dt so EV equal to KV into D by D2, where KV is the back EMF constant, it is known as whole second part rect. So if I draw the electrical equation of that particular parameter, so we will find that the electrical equation of that particular parameter that we have done, we will find that the electrical equation of that will be for the particular system, it will be Ea minus IARA minus LADIDT equal to EB. So that is LADDT of IAT plus RAIA plus EB equal to Ea. And what is the motor torque constant that is J into, if I do the motor torque constant that is J into D phi dt, dt2 of uh, d2 phi by dt square plus B into d phi dt equal to torque T that is Ka into Ia. So I am taking the Laplaces. If I take the Laplaces, it will give that La for the La into S into Ias plus Ra into Ias plus Ebs equal to Es. Or we are finding the values of 
RA plus LAS into IAS plus EAS equal to EAS. So again, if I take the Laplace of this one, it will be given as J into S square SH plus B SHS equal to PS base KS into IAS. So ES minus EDS equal to RA plus LAS plus IS. So put the value of IS. So we are developing an equation that HS which is multiplied with the help of that particular thing is the S into KB that is will be the EBS. So what is the EBS? And from the equation 8, from the equation 8, that is EBS equal to KB into SHS. So EBS equal to KB into S of HS or the 5S, anything. So HS will be S into KB that will find the EBS. Now from the relevant equation that is EA minus EBS that is CAS that is into and the EBS that is EA minus EBS it is multiplied with the help of 1 by RA plus LAS which will give that IS means IS by 1. So EBS by EAS minus EBS by RA plus LAS so which is multiplied by 1 by RA plus LAS which is given that IAS. Now from, we are just taking the Laplace of those two equations and we will found the log diagram. So from the equation 9 it is seen that from the equation 9 HS by IAS, HS by IAS from the equation 9 it is seen that HS by IAS equal to A by S into JS plus B. So IAS that is multiplying with the chain constant of A, A by S into JS plus B will give the HS. So now I have found the IAS. EAS, EBS. So just from these three blocks, we have developed a recombined the block that is EAS into and EAS minus EBS that is EBS coming here, which is multiplied with the help of. So EAS that is this portion that is. And EBS which is multiplied by 1 by LAS plus RA which is the IAS and this IAS is multiplied with the help of A by S into JS plus B which will give the SHS and this HS is multiplying with the SKB which is with the EBS. So this is the recombined of the above blocks. So the closed loop temper function will be give that HS plus EAS equal to GS plus 1 plus GS. So this is our GS, this two, multiplication of this two. This is our ages. Just putting those values, we just found that the total transfer function is A A by S into J L A square plus R A J plus L A B into S plus K A K B. So just putting those values, we are obtaining the total transfer function of a system of the So if I take two, these two values simultaneously, we can easily draw this first. If I take two, these two values, we can easily able to draw the this block diagram. So how we will able to draw this that block diagram first? We will see that how we can easily able to draw the block diagram first. So let us concentrate on the this situation. Where it is written as this is plus and this is minus. This is plus one this is minus, and it is given as. Yes. So that EAS that is 
and it is the EAS minus EDS from that equation. So this is the EDS. So EAS minus EDS. So this is EDS. So EAS minus EDS. So this is EAS minus EDS. That is multiplied with the help of a thin block called. 1 by this one R A plus this into L A this into L A to find the total output called IAS. Now this IAS that is multiplying with another gain block called this one a by a into j s plus b to find the value of output that is Hs or say the phi s. So output Hs by phi s. Hs, that is the phi s. So again, that Hs that is multiplying with s into kb from the first block. So it is multiplying with kb into s. So multiplying with a B into S to find the EBS. So this is the entire block diagram that is we have seen. So it is also seen that because this is our this full block is our entire GS. And this full block is our HS. So the transfer function is that output is the HS or the phi S. This one, this is for the feedback HS. Uh, so the transfer function is that we are obtaining that is, say this is the HS or the phi S in this written, we have written this output by or input, input is the EAS. This is our enter transfer function that we have we have to find. So using the conception of this formula GS by 1 plus GS HS, this is the total GS and this is the this is the total GS and this is our HS. So putting those values, we are finding the transfer function. There's a transfer function that is we have found. In. So this is the conception of armature control method. Now you are coming to the field control method. So field control method means the terminal, the armature terminal is connected to a constant DC source with a very high internal impedance. As a result, the armature current will be remain constant if the internal impedance or the resistance is very high. Control signal from the controller is fed to the field winding with resistance RF. And the inductance LF. The armature is mechanically coupled to the load. So this is the arrangement of the field control. So I have just field controls can easily be done. So let us draw the symmetric diagram of the field control. So the armature control is known to us. Let us draw the symmetric diagram of the field control. So it is seen that in case of the field control, the field is applied so here this is the field and this is the field resistance RF. Here 
here it is given a control signal that is called the EF. This is a field control that is I am dealing with. Now, so RF, the field resistance, followed by a, a LF, the field inductance, LF, and IF, that is the field current that is flowing to the circuit. I circuit F. And here is the armature. With an high value, in order to make it constant, the impedance R is very high. And it is connected to a DC source that is this one. It is connected to a DC source. It is plus minus ES here. It is a constant DC source. And the R value is very high. In order to make the current that is IA, in order to make the current that is IA constant. So here the load that is connected, mechanical load that is connected to the dashboard of the damper winding this is b the dashboard of the damper winding that is b and the moment of inertia that is j so the torque and the angular displacement which is t and the theta which is torque and the angular displacement and this is the armature that is making a constant current that is flowed and this is ia is the constant so constant value of the current that is float and also the EA that is the DC source that is the very with a very high impedance, the impedance value is very high that is R and this is the DC source that is given and also this is the control signal. Again, uh, it is seen that uh, the DC source is very high and EF is only known as the control signal. So, it is only known as the control signal. So, we have uh, seen this is the field control of a DC motor. This is only known as field control of DC motor. So, in order to find the field control that is all are given here, that is the RF is the field winding resistance in Ohm, ALF is the field winding inductance in Henry, IF is the field current in Ampere, EF is the applied field voltage at volt, R is the internal impedance of the source Ohm, I is the armature current in Ampere, T is the torque developed by the motor newton meter, J is the equivalent moment of inertia of the rotor of motor and load that is kg meter square, B is the equivalent viscous friction of the motor and the load that is nm rat newton meter rat per second. So the field equation can be written as EF equal to IFRF plus LF DIF DDT of IF and this rotational motor can be written as T equal to J into D, D, D2 theta by dt square plus B into D theta dt equal to Kf into If. So, this is the field control, it is known as that torque is directly proportional to the, so the in case of the field control that is torque that is proportional to the pi into If, Ia, so as the Ia is constant, as the Ia that is, we have found is constant. So, can write torque is directly proportional to the IF and in omit order to omit the proportionality constant torque equal to P into IF. So this is known as proportionality constant. So KF into motor field torque constant that is Newton meter per ampere. So it is KF into IF. So if I just the values 
and we will get the taking the Laplace of that equation that is t equal to j d2 d d e two theta plus d by dt square plus b d theta dt equal to a f into i f. So I am just taking the Laplace of e f s that we have gone. It is a uh, r f plus s l f into i f that is r f s f e f s equal to r f l f r f i f s plus s into l f i f s. So we are getting the e f. So again, from that particular equation, the top equation that we have done, that is we have gained the HS cell of IS equal to J S square plus B S plus K F into I F. So same here, we can easily draw the block diagram. From the equation five, it is E S equal to one by R F plus S L F equal to I F S and I F S equal to, uh, with the multiplication of K F into J square plus B S, we just get the value of HS. So combine the block diagram, we just getting the EFS equal to 1 by RFS into SFS S into LF equal to IFS which multiply by KF into JS plus JSB JS plus B into S equal to HS. So this is the entire block diagram which is then given as a third order system. So this is the field control just I am drawing the field control conception uh, so that is it. that the combination of the two blocks will give that is the e f s that is multiplying with the gain block called 1 by from the equation 1 by r f plus s into l f s into l f Will give the value of IFS that one is multiplying with again again block that is AS by putting the Laplace is JS plus B into S JS plus B is we are getting the phi s of the ages so it is seen that uh, multiplying these two factors we are getting the entire block that is seen here and it is given third order system this is the Type 1 third order system like armature control dissimilar, it does not provide the inherent feedback paths. And so, from stability point of view, it does not provide a good stability option. So, this is the field control of a DC motor, servo motor. So, so, now let us we are consider on the AC servo motors. So, in case of the AC servo motors, it is the construction as given that the uh, AC servo motors are basically two phase. Reversible induction motors modified for servo operation and AC servo motors are used in the application requiring rapid and accurate response characteristics. To achieve these characteristics, these AC servo motors have very small diameters, high resistance rotors. The AC servo motors small diameters provide low inertia for fast starts, stops, and reversals. High resistance provide nearly linear speed torque characteristics for accurate servo motor control. This is the general scaling figure for the AC servo motors that we have already seen. One is the reference winding and one is the control winding and they are 90 degree each other in order to produce the rotating magnetic field and this is the magnetic load is there so they are 90 degree apart in the, the temporal and the spe special means in uh, they are 90 degree apart in uh, space and also the 90 degree voltage that is supplied is sine omega t and n sine omega t plus 90 degree that is the control voltage is vm sine omega t and the reference voltage is vm sine omega t plus 90 degree that's the temporal phase displacement and with the special phase displacement that's what is the rotating magnetic field so at two stator winding normally excited by the two phase pass circuit and that is the phase displacement graph of a stator winding is this that is 90 degree that is vc that is the control voltage and vr is lag uh, vr that is a vr that is the 90 degree leading voltage that is seen in this figure so the power supply that is given that is two stator windings are normally excited by the two phase power supply if a two phase voltage supply is not available then a single phase supply with additional circuit is used to generate the phase difference that is the 90 degree Voltage to state phase that is we have already seen that the supply voltage is given to the stators and they are 90 degree phase displacement in temporal and the special to generate the rotating magnetic field. This is a squirrel case type of rotor that is same that is the 
length is t and the diameter is a t and the length diameter to length ratio d by l is kept small to reduce the moment of inertia of the rotor this is a square effect and the characteristic stuff that i have already told the speed in rad per second and torque in newton per meter there is a fixed torque is in newton per meter there is a fixed phase winding is fed to the rated voltage different voltages are applied to the control phasing the curves are not straight line that is uh, linear to develop a linear mechanical model we have to develop one or more different equation so the different equation that we have already known that is torque is j into d2 theta by dt square plus d b to d5 dt that is one taking the laplaces which is the ts equal to minus ks into hs and kc into ecs okay so this is the torque that is required the linear torque equation can be determined by t equal to minus k into theta dot t plus kc into ect okay so it is so the motor angular speed is theta dot t and torque is a function of theta dot t and ect is the control voltage so i am taking that equation of that particular laplace that t equal to j h s square h plus b h s so from the equation 9 and t we are getting together we are founding a transfer function that is the output is the angular displacement theta s or the h s and the ECS the A E suffix C S is the control voltage that is K C by J square plus B S plus K S that is the general AC servo motor and we are generalizing an equation in order to find a linear curve. Here mathematical model that we have already found that the torque is a function of uh, angular displacement, angular speed, and also the control voltage E C T. We are founding an transfer function. So we have learned about the speed control of a DC motor. With the armature control and the feed control, and also the conception of the servo mechanism, servo motor, and also the AC servo motor. Thank you.